Okay, ladies. What do you like to do? Sit back and relax and watch Girl Talk too. Conversations with ladies. What do you like to do? Sit back and relax and watch Girl Talk too. Conversations with Sha going through the roof. Each and every Sunday, tell a friend to tell a friend. Tune in at 8 p.m. and pop women. Doing better is a mind on Instagram. We follow cause girls run the world. We let our minds lead the way. The future is great. We should have girls up every night. Girls run the world. We let our minds lead the way. The future is great. We should have girls up every night. Girls run the world. We let our minds lead the way. The future is great. We should have girls up every night. Girl talk. Let us play one more time. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Tune in at 8 p.m. and pop up women. Doing better is a mind on Instagram. We follow cuz girls run the world. We let our minds lead the way. The future is great. We should have girls up every night. Girls run the world. We let our minds lead the way. The future is great. We should have girls up every night. Girls run the world. We let our minds lead the way. The future is great. We should have girls up every night. Yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your girl, Sean. Girl Talk, I got my man Rich with me. Minister Richard is in the building. How y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? I missed y'all last Sunday. I missed y'all last Sunday. What up, WVOX 1460 AM, the voice of the people. We here on the radio. Shout out to all my radio followers. Shout out to all my Instagram followers. We are here. I missed y'all. What's been going on? Who's cooking Sunday dinner? You already know how I start this off with. A sister's hungry. Who making me a plate? Um, welcome, welcome. Like I said, Minister Richard is in the building. Shout out to everybody for being on time. Um, I feel like ever since I started the radio, like I've been on time. Like it's a schedule. You can't be on black people's time no more. Um, so let's make being on time like a regular thing like you know something that we all do we're not coming two hours late because we want to make sure everybody else is there already like <laughs> we want to get there yo black people want to get there when the party is started like is the party started or i ain't coming yet i ain't being the first ones there sitting down doing da 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 but what up y'all how y'all feeling out there wvox 1460 am the voice of the people my mother my brother's on they having a cookout right now but guess where i'm at work um, save me a burger, mama. Um, but shout out, <laughs> shout out to y'all. How y'all feeling out there? How we doing? How was last week? Um, a sis like me got a tan. I was out of town. Um, mental health days are very important. Sometimes you just got to take time for yourself. Even though you're running a business, doing what you got to do. It's not something that you can do every single day because you do got to make your money. But those mental health days and those just that quiet, you hear that? It's very important. It's very, very important. Um, how y'all feeling today? I have a challenge. I'm going to talk about the challenge towards the end of the show. We're going to do a challenge. I'm going to tell y'all how you get involved in the challenge, what the challenge is about. And the, as you know, earlier I posted, if you could have whoever brings the most friends in to watch the show, I have a prize for you. So if you could get some friends right now to watch Girl Talking to Go Follow, I got a prize for you. I'm Rich. What's up? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Good, good to see you again. Yes, good to, good to see you again, too. You and your lovely wife is in the building. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, shout out to y'all. Um, so this is how we started off with. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I told you. Um, I wanted to start off. I wanted to start Girl Talk Off now, like, with the, with the prayer. Um, I was on vacation. I was just doing a lot of, <coughs> before vacation, I just been doing a lot of thinking and a lot of, just a lot and I'm like I need to start praying like you know on girl talk like um people hit me up with different things that they're going through and you know just different stuff and you know a little prayer never heard of anybody so minister if you could start us off with a prayer before we um start this convo sure yeah. bow your heads everybody
pray, Lord God, and all the things that you've done in your will. Cover each and every person with your blood. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. So, yes, that's how we're going to be starting Girl Talk Off with. I don't know if my prayer is going to be as good as his, but that's what we're going to start doing. So, how has 2020 affected your ways for 2021? Um, well, 2020 affected uh, me. Um, is this your sexy voice? I'm playing. Like I I, <laughs> so, no, no, seriously, um, I'm sorry. No, I um, it, it it affected me, like it made me pray more. Um, okay. Because people think when you're a minister, a preacher, a Christian, like, you're always on point with your spiritual life. Mm-hmm. But we still live in this physical body, in this physical world. So sometimes we do need. Yes. So, so 2020, the end of 2019, and then 2020, I lost a lot of people with this whole pandemic. Mm-hmm. And even outside of the pandemic, a lot of things was happening. And it just made me grow in my faith more because there were some things I was doing that I just could not control. Right. I could not control. Um, and mentally and emotionally, I was being affected. So I had no other choice but to either break down, mm-hmm. which can happen. Yes. Um, that happened uh, to a prophet Elijah in the Bible. He sat on the tree and asked God to take his life because he was on some of the pressure from his enemies. Okay. I was kind of in the same thing, but I wasn't like going to God or like that, but I just was like, Lord, you have to bring me to the next level in you. Like, I can't play with this and fake this because like, I'm really scared. Mm-hmm. I got a wife, I got two daughters. Right. And um, both my parents are ill. So there's a lot of people depending on me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, God, I don't want to die inwardly. Right. You know, but I was under so much um, just a lot of things. Okay. Some of the stuff you know because we know each other. Right. But I just asked God, I was like, you have to take me to that next level in me. The, that next level that I saw in my grandmother. Uh-huh. That next level that I saw in my mother and my father. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people used to make fun of the old church folks because they'd be in there praising them. But now I know why. They would be so deep because pressure comes with Okay. Oh, that's true. Um, that's you know some people think that just because you're a pastor, or because you're a counselor, or you're just somebody who's smiling that you don't go through things and that life is just so easy for you or they see you right here so they're like no oh he's fine or she's fine he got a family he don't you know what I mean and it doesn't matter what you have money don't buy happiness you know it's still life we're still humans and we still go through things so again yeah, that's. I understand that. So tell us who you are. Tell us who Richard is. Tell us who you are. I like how you said that. My grandmother used to say that. Say it again. I felt her. Say it again. Richard. Like, <laughs> tell us who you are. Um, as far as what? Like which part? There's Just like period. Part. Who are you? Like, hmm. like who who do you want people to know? Like what do you want them to know? That's a good question. Right. Like <laughs> you ain't got to say everything. Yeah, but, you can't tell folks everything. You just can't. Right. Mm-hmm. No, nah, they're going to throw it right at you. Right. <laughs> Remember what you said? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, no, I was just playing. <laughs> but who are you? Uh, well, I'm a full-time husband, full-time father. Uh, I'm full-time in the ministry. Uh, I'm okay. going back to school. You know, I'm a drug counselor. I've been a drug counselor for 20 years. I've been in the field of human services for 20 years. I've got degrees in human services. I'm going back to social work because uh, mental health and human needs is something that I take very seriously. Okay. Uh, I've been through, a, to getting where I'm at today, I've been through a lot of stuff. You know, there's a whole lot of history behind me and my family. Uh, my father was also, is also uh, in the ministry. Okay. He, he had uh, struggles with drugs back in the day. He was shot by the police and in jail a lot of times. And that's why he was really hard on me because he didn't want to do it. That same, uh-huh. Yeah, so in a nutshell, I'm just, uh, I would consider myself a humanitarian. Okay. Oh, that at least that's what I want to believe that I am, and and express it. Uh, I I don't know why I'm like that. Since I was a kid, I always had to express yourself. Yeah. Um. Do people sometimes look at you differently for being a man that likes to express themselves? Oh, all the time, all the time. Um. Growing up, I faced a lot of discrimination because uh, being the son uh, of a preacher, being a growing up in the church, but also growing up. Uh-huh. And then being from New Rochelle, like a lot of people, look at, <laughs> a lot of people look at Westchester County like there's no 
problems out there. Right, so it's just the county. Yeah, like so, in, like even amongst my own people, black people, I've been stereotyped and looked at funny for just mm -hmm. being the way that I am, especially being an expressive. That's how I got into music because I was an expressive. But like, you know, I grew up in the era of like, you know, gangster rap. Like you couldn't, a black right. man, you couldn't show no feelings or you couldn't talk about how you got your heart broken. Right. So even when I was like trying to get a record deal back in the day, like people was like, you can't make songs like that. Like I, I was literally told like, you're not supposed to be like you are. Wow. Yeah. Cause you're yeah. black, cause you're a black man. A young black man, well I'm not young no more, but a young, younger black man back in the day. Uh -huh. And uh, the only person who really could, outside of my mother and, uh, and my father somewhere, the only really, the only person who really understood me, understood me was my wife. Okay. That's how I knew that she was the one because. How long y'all been together? 12 years. Nice. God bless you. Yes. <laughs> That's okay. And how was it going through the pandemic um, with your family being, I don't know if you were stuck in the house. Was that like a different aspect? I know y'all been together for a long time, but there was never a time where you was really stuck in the house, really. Um, Nothing's open. Um, even dating and going outside or, you know, how was well, you that know for y'all? To be honest with you, when you are, I'm a free going person, but I do believe that uh, it's danger outside of Christ, outside of God. So staying in the house wasn't really a problem for me like that. Okay. At times it got to me, but staying in the house wasn't really a problem for me like that because I've always, once I got married and got a family, after working and after going to school and checking on my mother and father, I really didn't want to be out of the house. Right. I really, okay. That's how I knew I was ready to be a husband because like, I don't hang out. Like, right. I, outside of working and all of that, or if unless I got something specific to do, I really don't hang out. You enjoy being home with your family. Yeah, I enjoy being home with your family. Okay. Big time. Sorry, y'all. He's taken. <laughs> don't nobody want me to go out with this show. So rapping. How did you get into rapping? Like, how did that come about? Well, that that I have a long history. With that. Well, first let me say this. I grew up with two old school cousins. Okay. Uh, before my father was saved. Okay. Um, everybody you could think of. Uh, <laughs> the Temptations, uh, the Eagles, the Doobie Brothers. But then in my in my community, the uh, New Rochelle, Mount Vernon, New York, there's a long history of hip hop. Mm -hmm. Like, like right. I, I know Grand Kuba personally. I know Sadat X personally. My cousin, God rest his soul, was, I was told he was supposed to be in the group, but he ran into trouble and called him dead. And mm -hmm. he's dead now, actually. Keep the speed, God bless you. Uh, but I know uh, Lord Jamal's brother. We are friends. I know CL Smooth. Okay. Uh, that's my buddy. You know what I mean. Uh, so you was chilling. You was rapping. Yeah, and, and, and my mm -hmm. I, well, I grew up under them. I'm younger than them, but I was listening closely to what they were saying. Right. They all uh -huh. they all had that power to the people vibe, and that's what I liked. Okay. Because my father came from that era, but also my mother is from Bronx River Projects, where Africa Bambada is from. Oh. So. There's, growing up, I, I, I met a lot of the black spades, like Dynamite, Sundance. Guys, guys you may not know, but... I heard them, right. Yeah, I knew all these I knew all these dudes. I knew uh, Miss Alerio from um, the Zulu Nation. Um, um, a dude named Poncho uh, from the Touch of Class. Um, um, we call a chapter of the Zulu Nation. Um, a lot of, so a lot of these dudes gave me knowledge on, on their level. So by okay. the time I got to the microphone... That's not news ready. Yeah, by the time I got to the microphone, I was ready because because I was just like they taught me. They was like, "Rich, you ain't us. You not you not a gang baby, not a gangster. Mm -hmm. but take what we tell you. Right. Escape this." And and a lot of them knew my father because my father ran everywhere. Like I found out my father used to hang out at all these round table in the Bronx, and I'm like, "You can't go in there without knowing stuff. Right. Without, if you don't know old man Riley, God bless his soul, you wasn't getting in there." And I was like, "Dad, you was in there?" Like when I was down in the Bronx one day, dudes was. Mentioning my father's name, sleep. That's what they used to call. I said, "How do you know? He from New York." So, right. by the time I got, that was the, outside. Word. So, by the time, by the time I got to the microphone, mm -hmm. I had a whole lot to express. Okay. I had a whole lot to say because it was a lot of pressure resisting the streets that take on black men. Right. Resisting the temptations that take on black men. I had, I had a bigger fight. It wasn't knuckling up in the street all the time. Mm -hmm. It was fighting 
spiritual battle. So it, right. was, it was hard. It was hard because on one side, it was like, you better not let us down because they'll end up in jail like we did. Right. Then on they the other side, it was like, like they they don't understand that the that evil world is still trying to pull you in. Right. You know no matter mean? how the positive things you're doing, there's always yeah. something. Yeah. I was suffering demonic attacks at night. Really? Yeah. Dead serious. So I, that's something I would not say because if you lie about that, that's invited. Right. But I was suffering demonic attacks at like nine years old. Okay, so you definitely had a lot to say. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. had a lot to say. Yeah. Um, so you was also in the group, right? As yeah, you... Emotional Studio Productions, ESP. How was that working with other people? Like, how was it being <laughs> in the group? Um, well, I I started off with a group called USS. Not um, they wasn't really appreciating me for what I felt I had to offer because they looked at me like Richard Saw. You know, okay. So he, his message is not about punching somebody in the face or fighting. Wasn't aggressive enough. Yeah, it wasn't aggressive. I mean, I talked about what I witnessed. Uh-huh. But it wasn't talking about, like, if you notice on, on, on none of my album covers, you never see naked women. You know, mm-hmm. Like, that just wasn't about that. Now, let me just make this clear. I, love, I like women. <laughs> what I'm saying is I didn't like exploiting them. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, my, me and my mother is like that. Okay. So... You she heard, women. Yeah, she heard a lot of my music. For her to see, like, I, so, for, she's told me, like, I, I saw one of your album covers. But she was happy with it. Okay. But if she had to see, like, naked girls on there. Like, and I got this is not sister, how I raised you. Yeah, that, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people forget these rappers got mothers that's hearing this stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? But uh, working with other people, I, I had left USS because they wasn't really allowing me to be who I was. And it was kind of like, I felt sleeping on sleeping on what I had mm-hmm. to offer so I got with um, a dude named Mike. Uh, his stage name is Mandy Verse. And um, he was fresh in the game. So he saw me, he remembered me from doing music. I kind of took him under my wing. He was a gifted, incredible dude. Like he already had his own talent. Mm-hmm. I cannot take credit for his talent. But what I did was I taught him about the old school music. We had a sample from the Delphonics, the Red Hands. And okay. we made a group and it worked. And it and, worked out. Yeah, and we looked up. We had a lot of inspiration because we looked up to his brother. His brother was actually signed by ABD. Oh wow! Got songs okay. By, yeah, it just didn't last long, but they were signed to different records. Okay. So, yeah. Um, you said a funny thing. You said um your mom, and I've been you know there's a lot of rappers or just young black kids getting killed, shot, and whatever by whoever. You know what I mean? There's a lot of beef that really is not even that serious some some girl or so or walking down the street the wrong way um i was thinking like if do you think if like the mothers of the community got together of some of these places where their children are shooting each other because of even though you were thug in the street most times when you go home you still your mama's little boy like you know what i mean you still mom my bad or sorry mom or, let me go clean my room or you know you listen to your mother do you think like what's a way do you like that we could probably get this violence to go down? Do you think incorporating like their moms or they see the your enemy's mom sitting right next to you, right with them, with the kid, like, y'all need to talk about this. Like what's going on or Well, it's funny you said that you asked me that question. Here's here's my answer. It, 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 this answer has a couple of points to it. Uh, first of all, we have to reestablish the family. Yes. The family's born. Okay. Uh, the black community once had strong families. Much as we went through, right, in the 60s, if like mm-hmm. you look, right, they didn't even have as much information as we did. They did more with the little they had. Mm-hmm. Like today, that what bothers me is everybody's a scholar. But right. you ain't doing nothing. Right. Um, so we got to reestablish the family. Um, we have to bring men and women back together. And what I mean is, I'm not, I'm not even talking about romantically. I'm just talking about the way God intended for us to help one another. God, in mm-hmm. the Bible, it says, it's not good for men to be at home, so we need women. Mm-hmm. What happened is, like, I can tell you from my experience, I didn't grow up in a chauvinist era where men had all the power. Mm-hmm. I grew up in a feminist era. So I grew up hearing how, how disappointed women are with us. Mm-hmm. I grew up hearing that. Even though, to be honest, I, my generation wasn't responsible. We wasn't there when men had all the power. And truthfully, black men, we never really had power like that. You know what I mean? We had the image. We was given the image. They'll sell you the image, but they're not going to but I think that if we get the male bashing out of the way and love one another again, mm-hmm. um, we'll stop the expression of hate that's in the streets. Because these young boys is expressing pain. Like when I used to do groups in the Youth for Offender program and um, when I worked down in the Bronx and, and all of that, and some of the guys I named for you actually used to help me do community. Um, 
Rob Gavin, shout out to Rob G. Uh, I found out that there's a lot of broken hearts mm -hmm. that become vulnerable to the street because their hearts are broken, crying and cool. Right. So if somebody say, take this gun, sniff this coat. They do it. <clears throat> you know right. what I'm saying? So it turns into a growl. Right. But it's really tears. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I, I, had, I had to find a shoulder to cry. I found it, but it was an emergency because if I didn't find it, I might be the same way. You wow. know what I'm saying? And when I found music, I started to crack through my music. Because you found yeah. the outlet. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of my music was about my pain. Okay. Okay. Um, guys, thank you for listening to WVOX 1460 AM of the People. Girl Talk Instagram Live. Everybody that's listening to us on the radio, I hope that y'all enjoy it. And on Instagram Live. Remember, at the end of the show, we're doing um, our challenge. I'm going to let y'all know what that is towards the end. I hope everybody stays tuned in because I really want y'all to be a part of it. Um, and to everybody on the radio, if you want to call in, if you have any questions to ask, the number is 914-636-0110. That's 914-636-0110. For anybody listening to on Instagram, at the bottom, there's a question box. If you have anything you want to ask me or Rich, um, feel free to write it in the comments and we'll get to it. Um, but yeah, so when you're rapping, when you was rapping and doing that, how did it make you feel to be in front of like people or the crowd? Like how was that feeling inside? Like that adrenaline? Um, you know what? I never went through the feeling this is gonna be strange when I said it, but I never went through the feeling of like when I was on stage feeling like I was somebody. Mm -hmm. Because I was so used to my message being rejected. So I always had wow. a nervous feeling. But it did feel liberating for me to be able to get wow. on stage and say my piece, say what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. And in some of the crowd, I could see somebody saying, what do you expect to say that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, like I, I what I wanted it. people to know was, I wasn't trying to be the man. I was trying to be heard. I, I, wanted, I just wanted to be heard. Like, Heavy D had that commercial years ago. He said, if you have a message, speak up. I said, I want to be heard. And, I, and that stuck with me when he said that. And when I was on stage a few times, like, me and ESP got like four or five shows on my own, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, when I got into the ministry, I left. But when I was on stage, it felt liberating. Like somebody, I need somebody to hear my pain. Okay. Because I was crying off hell. Right. Know? And that was the way. Yeah. Wow, you know. Don't, no, don't cry. get me wrong. Now, I, I, there were some girls that I was like, oh, I, right. I, I, was, I, was <laughs> I just hope they don't see them pay, pay less shoes I have. I'm done. I'm <laughs> done. Um, so people, people always put rap, like you say. You know, you have friends that was, you know, new people that was in the street, but you knew that life wasn't for you. But somebody from the outside seeing you rap may have thought that you was a street guy just because you're a rapper, you're black, you're tall, you know, whatever, how I'm they judge us. I mean, you, well, you're Sorry. taller than your wife. That's all that matters, you're taller than your wife. Um, <laughs> why do you think people put rappers and like street life together? Like, why? Because you're a rapper, you have to be like in the streets. Well... It, two reasons. Something happened in the industry where that became what was the money maker. Like when I went to, I was in that house of funk and the show, and that was a studio where uh, like Red Blue Bottle used to feed me. And this is when we was first trying to come out. There was a dude in there that was saying, yo, you need to rap about the streets. But he was listening to me and my partner's song. He did uh -huh. song for him with Acapella. He was like, yeah, you need to rap about the streets. But he was basically saying, that's what's selling. And even back in the day, this is before I was married, my ex-girlfriend, she was like criticizing my music. And she was like, well, ain't nobody talking about this. That's what she said. Right, nobody but I like being different. So, yeah, so it's about fitting in. But also it gets misinterpreted because hip-hop was started by the streets. It was started by the streets, but not in a sense of we going to sell drugs and beat people up. Right. It, just be, it, it was a voice that was produced in the streets. It was a voice with a message. Like if you listen to Melly Mel, Melly Mel was just talking about the struggle. Melly Mel was never saying selling crack is cool. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like when they was talking about what was going on in the five boroughs, like, you know, Brooklyn was probably the roughest borough in New York, I think. And when they was telling you about the Bronx, Still Brooklyn, is. yeah, the Bronx, Brooklyn and all that, they was just telling you what's happening. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Especially wow. in the 80s, oh my gosh. Different era, right? Yeah, I had a rap battle. You know, 
the Howard houses in Brooklyn. I thought we was going to die that night. <laughs> it gets real. Yeah. It gets real. Guys, thank you for listening to WVOX 1460 AM, the voice of the people. If you have anything to say, if you want to sell, do you want to do something, if you want to come on the radio station, feel free. Hit me up. Let me know. Y'all already know how we do this. I got Minister Rich here, rapper, minister, does it all, um, former rapper, family man. Um, so yeah, we're just sitting here, we're talking, we're kicking it. Thank you, thank you for coming in. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, like I said at the bottom, you can also write your questions. If you're on the radio listening, the number is 914-626-0110. Remember, at the end of the show, I have a game that I want to talk about, um, a challenge that I want to incorporate into Girl Talk. Something's different, but just something for us ladies or men, however you want to do. Um, just to have some fun. Um, so, what's one of your favorite songs that you made? Um, I like the Valley because it was honest. I mean, I have, I can't say that I really like my songs like that because I hear them, I heard them all the time. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but my how favorite, you not gonna like your songs? It's your song. Th- there's two off the last album you did was uh, the Valley and Chronicles of a Soldier. Um, do you do you? Is it memorized? I don't mean to put you on blast. I can't. <laughs> Can you spit something for us, minister, or is that life over? Well, that, that part of my life is over. I mean, I can tell you the words of the song. Is it going to be in rap form? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I haven't he, done He's it. shy right now. Do it for your wife. She wants you to still be a man. <laughs> <laughs> well, the valley, the, the chorus goes like this. I pray for no drama, but I'm ready if it comes. I speak with the music instead of using the guns. Okay. And even though the road gets dark and cloudy, the music is what gets me from my day down in the valley. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And the oh. first line I think is, I'm a soldier driven by the pain inside me. My rappers are looking to the world as dying. The sun is the only thing drying my tears. I was carrying a gun to me from my fears. I never had a comfortable sleep. My mom was running and kept telling me that the war was coming, so I would never sleep. I'm not trying to be deep, but I refuse to live in fear. Warrior with a broken heart, mom's baby, living in this world trying not to go crazy. I told mommy, don't worry, I'm gonna be alright. This is life, it's a battle, you got to let me fight. Mm. But the streets keep trying to make love to my mind so I can break fast like Jordan in his prime. But don't move the mountain, cause I still wanna cry, that's why I pray to God, I took the clip on the mind. Mm. Mm. That's like some rapid poetry, <laughs> I'm feeling it. Um, so do you also write poetry though? Yeah, I used to write poetry. Um, and I heard that you play um, instruments too, right? Yeah. yeah. What I, instruments do you play? I dabble in the piano. Some of the records I did, some of the piano pieces I did. Um, but I'm a percussionist. I play uh, drums. I can play a drum set. Uh, oh, okay. I play African drums, the bongos, the congos, the djembe. The only drum I don't play is the kimbao. Okay. Yeah, that's the only drum. Uh, like the congos and all that African drum. That's what you do. Okay. Well rounded, musical. Uh, <laughs> so rapping to ministry, like how did that happen? That's where my wife comes in. Um, years ago, this is a true story. Years ago, when I was, uh, I think I was in the grade. I wasn't doing too well. So I, uh-huh. so, uh, I believe that a lot of black people go through like a lot of crisis. Okay. Because we're told to be so many people. Right. You can't cry. You gotta be tough. My mom is telling you. Uh-huh. Dad telling you this way and behind, No, actually, bad. actually, my father was like real supportive of my mother, but it's that world that you face when you go outside. Yeah, you know outside the kids when, and stuff. Yeah, when the girls don't like you because you're yeah. not that dude, that hurts. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. autom- I mean, you naturally attracted to, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, me too. The, the, <laughs> so where the rap came in, um, I mean, ministry came in is I I prayed a prayer. Um, so was, they put me in the BOCES program. That was now BOCES is, is like a it's like a plus now. It's like a good thing. Now. Okay. But when I was in school, if they took you out of school and put you in BOCES for the rest of the day, that they was trying to tell you you might need to go get a trade because you're not doing that. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was told by the people that put me in. There. So I prayed. On the, I started crying. I was upset. I was like, Lord, you got to take control of my life because I don't know what my future. I was like scared. Like when when high school was over, I don't know. Right. I don't want to disappoint my parents. I don't want to, but I just don't know. 
was scared. Mm -hmm. He heard that prayer. I went through some more troubles. Years later, me and my producer was planning the next album. And all of a sudden, it hit me. I looked down. And it just seemed like I could hear God saying, I'm going to be coming to you. Something like mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? And I started to remember the demonic attacks that I was doing as a kid. So I also, sent, I also asked God to send me a life in my life. So but after that, I started misbehaving terribly. I was like, man, I was in a relationship with this relationship. Right. Because of low self esteem. They said they can't hear you talk a little oh, bit. Oh, I, um. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I asked God to send me a wife. But when you pray to God for stuff, right, you're you supposed to wait on him. Uh huh. So, but I didn't wait. I started dating and doing all this. So, when God called me into the ministry, He sent my wife as a guide to point me at God. And that's the first woman I could it feel like the devil was telling me, no, resist her. Uh -huh. like any other woman that came at me at that time, I was enjoying the attention. But when my wife came, I I knew her from back in the day. I tried to get one before, but she wasn't happy. Uh -huh. she, was, she was more focused in college and all. She was getting herself when, together. Yeah. When, when she came back, she was like, I see something. Well, did you have butter by mistake? Nah. <laughs> 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 that, that actually has happened. You won't talk about it. But, nah, but she was a god. She, she was letting me know, like, God... I see visions of you, God using you preaching. Mm. At that time, I didn't want to hear that. I was having fun. Yeah, I want to hear that. Happening and doing all that, meeting girls, and you know, it was like the medicine for my low self esteem. Like now, I'm getting yes instead of no. Right. I mean? So, but when she came, she was like, "Bitch, you got to really come out of that next time before something happens." And to be honest, I want to be honest with your viewers. Be honest. There was a woman I met who we never got together, but she told me later on that she. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So, the spiritual world is real. Yes. The devil could guide you into things that it may seem good, but I mean, God used my wife to point me back to my foundation. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of people looked at it when they left, when I left for that, they was mad. They was like, yo, it's because uh, you just do what she wants you. But they didn't understand. This was already in me. Mm -hmm. I had an idea, mm -hmm. but I was resisting. I wanted to do it my way. I wanted to keep that. Right. I want to keep doing what I was doing. I had, um, did I had like a little small apartment movie, some things, opportunities was coming. I just okay. wanted to do things my way. Uh, but when I got called into the ministry, um, I had to start from the beginning. It started with the first ministry being at home, he made me a husband. That was hard because I had to learn how to appreciate a woman of God who didn't have that demonic, sensual, uh, uh, like, pull. Mm -hmm. I had to love her from my heart, mm -hmm. not out of lust. Right. That was a transition because I was just like raised in church or not. I was like, a little right, you know, smash and pass. Well, I wouldn't say nah. that. <laughs> I was like a little sucker for love, but uh -huh. what I'm saying is that. Oh, oh, you, you was love, that person. Yeah, you you told on yourself. Okay. <laughs> but when you love with loving with your flesh and loving with your spirit is different. When you have to love with your spirit, that's why a lot of marriages don't work because people are scared. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my wife went through stuff. Like the first year was not sickness, money problems. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta love somebody with your spirit too. Right, yeah. and it works. And y'all just push through. It worked, and that's how I learned to bring that into the ministry. Okay. Because people don't understand the ministry is problems. God calls you to deal with problems. Mm. So how church is depicted today is not real. Like when you see all the big time preachers, I'm not knocking, but the big time preachers wearing the pinky rings and traveling. You gotta go through pain before you have a message. Yeah. So God calls you. You a problem. Mm -hmm. He gave he he allowed me to take on some problems. Cause I was like, why is this so hard? He was like, well, ministry just if Jesus was killed, right? They if the very like people don't understand how real that story is. If the Son of God was hated, he trying to tell you something, right? Like, but, um, I would say that 85 percent of the Bible is trouble. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. don't understand that the prophets were killed. The prophets were put in jail. So when you really read that scripture, right? That's why I tell people, ain't no white man for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. That really tells you, do you really want to be in this? Because some of the first places I preached was in jail, was in the streets. And my father took me to the dope spot where he got high. And I seen people fall out while he's preaching. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I was in, like, so, so the fake church that you see, I'm not, like, and a lot of times I get stereotyped because when people hear preaching, they're like, oh, he's one of them. But I'm like, no, nah, you don't know where I came from. Right. 
My father took me to the dope spots where he got out, where he got shot. And I seen people, like, falling out, drunk, coming to my father drunk, and he playing for me. So That's it's, it's, it's real, yeah. So he real. Wow. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like the ones on TV with the, uh, you know, I think TV and what people think of church, um, the stereotypes and you know how that all goes. Yeah. Um, guys, think scared of. No, no, no. I was like, I'd be like, Dad, we all right? Oh, right. We in the hood, hood, Dad. Yeah. We could have, we could have did this from the car. Did we right, have to get right. out? You don't got to drive through church. Right, Dad. <laughs> oh, yo, don't give nobody no idea. They're about to make a drive through church. We could go get a word. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Selena's talking. What? Uh, you know my manager. She be trying to whisper to me and tell me stuff, and I cannot hear. So I was like, huh? Repeat that. Um, guys, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Girl Talk, um, every Sunday, 8 p.m. We got Minister Rich here. We just kicking back. We just talking. We chilling. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, call in. Write write something in a comment. If you're listening to us on the radio, the number is 914-636-0110. Feel free to call in anytime you want and just and talk with us. That's all we're doing is talking. Um, like I said, at the end of the show, I'm going to have a challenge. And if you want to participate in the challenge, you can. Uh, I'm going to save that towards the end. But right now, we will minister. Um, so, what? Question. Oh, we got a question. What's your thoughts or um, how do you feel about DMX and his, his passion for both worlds? You know, the, 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 his struggles and you know his his uh, relationship with the Lord and how you brought it into his music. How do I feel about it? Um, like, yeah. I've, I I mean I never really had an opinion on it because I only saw glimpses of what uh, like what the media shows me. I always know like that's not the whole thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, I did know a very close friend of his when he was in the hospital. They came and said, "Come with you to the child one day." Uh, but what I can't, the most I can say is that I understand his struggle outside of the drugs because I understand how it feels to be pulled from both sides. And I think that's what he was expressing. Um, often I think he was misunderstood for glorifying the struggle, but I don't think he was glorifying it. I think he was trying to call for help because as black men, we're not really taught how to ask for ask help. For help. When we cry, we're told to shut up. When we when we cry, women get turned off. I'm just keeping it real. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, so I think the only way he knew was to um, let you see his struggle, but then to let you see his pain, and hopefully somebody understand. Like we have to. That's the thing, that, and, and that's why sometimes we don't make good husbands or good fathers, because we're not taught how to nurse our own wounds. So how can we do it for a wife? How can we do it for a daughter? Mm. Like I have, see, I had to. I have a wife. I'm raising two black females. So I had to really learn that. Seeing DMX was only, um, how should I say, just a confirmation of a lot of us. So um, I don't know what, what his talk with God was in his last moments, you know what I'm saying? But I knew that I felt like he was trying to come out of that world. Because that show business world, you know what I mean? It's a living, it's a job. Mm -hmm. um, there's corruption in every job. But it seems like that world wants you to sell your soul. Because even I was, I was never nowhere near on his own. But even I was presented with some propositions by people who didn't even have that much power. So that spirit is there. Yeah. So I think, I think he was, he was fighting. You know what I mean? And so I, it broke my heart though because I got so used to seeing him, you know, just on TV and social media that I never thought what if he passed away. Sometimes we don't think about that. But that's why we have, that's why I do what I do. You know what I mean? As far as being a counselor and being a minister, because I know how it feels to be struggle. You know what I mean? You know it. You're speaking from experience. Yeah. All I, struggles are not drugs, like I told you. Um, I was getting demonic attacks at the office. Right. And that was scary. Right. Wow. Um, so like, I don't go to church that often, but it seems like every time I go to church, the pastor is talking to me. Like, it feels like the subject is always like, who told him? Mm -hmm. So it's 
to oh her. Um, so like, how do y'all? How do you pick your speech? Because it's like, did you um go into my brain and know what I was going through and start talking about this? No, I, to be honest with you, a real preacher. Before we preach, we either fast or pray or we get into the word of God. We always get into the word of God, but we pray to get a message. Wow. We don't just come up with our own message. Uh-huh. Any preacher that's coming up with his own thing, that's not preaching. We, that's a little selfish. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> messages, there's messages that I've been given that I don't need to preach yet. But God will allow me to go through something with you and her. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I, like, I've never been, like, on drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like, coming up. Being in the music world, I've experimented, you know what I'm saying? I took a drink to the pool, and I never really was like, that's my thing. Yeah. But what I can tell you is that there's things I went through. Like, there was things I asked God to help me stop doing, and then I kept doing it. And I'm like, God, why won't you take this away from me? I'm not getting past it. Mm -hmm. Then I meet a person who says, which I need prayer because this is what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And you say, that's why. Because you know what that struggle is. Yeah. So sometimes what you're going through, God might give the pastor or the preacher a message for you, but he won't know it's you. Right. Like, I'll be preaching to people, and I had somebody call me on the phone crying. She I mean, she called me and put her husband on the phone. I was, I was talking in one of my sermons one day, and I said how God allowed me to go through, like, my struggles in school. You know, they just threw me in special ed, and they didn't understand that my father was transitioning from being on drugs and stuff like that to marry my mother. Right. So I went through a lot. So they just put me in special ed, tried to give me medication, not even knowing. Not so even. I preached that. Somebody called me a day or two later said my husband wanted to talk to me. He got on the phone crying. He said, you told my story. And he said, I need to meet you and talk to you. I need to meet you and talk to you because he was in the service. Wow. So I said, okay, meet me at the church. We talked. We cried. You know what I'm saying? This dude was like 50. I'm like 30 something. Mm -hmm. But two years later, he died. He died of cancer. Mm -hmm. So God must, God, of course God knew he's not going to be here much longer. Mm -hmm. Get it His self esteem is so low, he don't believe God can love him. Mm. That's how I felt. So I asked God, like, why don't you allow me to go through that much pain? So when I died, I'm like, I've been there. And I talked to that man. And when you talk to people, does it, does it make you feel like, did you get a feeling inside knowing that you're like reaching out to something, knowing that you're like touching somebody or they're inspired or they just feel like they're healing slow, you know slowly or like does does it give you like a rush like I know you said when you was on stage rapping you you know you was down yourself but when it comes to talking to people and counseling do you get a different feeling from actually connecting to, to somebody way, way different way different you know why because this is not about fame when I preach there's a fire in me I could be sick mm -hmm. and once the Holy Spirit starts rising up, I don't feel like yeah. except that. Like, God is speaking through me. Like, I never forget. Um, I went to the women's jail, and I started talking about my struggle with anxiety. And I said, look, I I literally been on medication for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, it, God showed me how amazing he is through ministry, like, that I could actually relate to women who are struggling. Because a lot of these women who are in jail, they're being, um, they deal with mental health. They deal with, they just looked at as crackheads or bad minds. Right. So they when, they, when they met a counselor, right. yeah, when they met a counselor or a preacher who could identify with feeling helpless and exploited, mm -hmm. like, I wanted to stay there. Not, I'm not talking about, like, sleep there, but I'm saying, I'm <laughs> yeah. here. I wanted to stay Like, I got keep, more to say. Yeah, because I'm talking about black, white, Hispanic, like, yeah, the, Jesus transcends he, he doesn't stop at race or nothing like or gender. All human beings have a problem, and that's evil. Evil is meant to corrupt human beings, mm -hmm. so it can change. The devil can't make a human being, but mm -hmm. he can corrupt them. That's how he fights right. God. So when we're able to talk about struggle, people get free. And my wife has been with me, like, sometimes when we go out and preach to the jail, and it's, it's this feeling of my life is worth something. Because that's what comes with following Jesus. And people feel like, oh, if I, if I accept Christ, I can't do this no more. So, but it's not right there. You get freedom, but then you get fulfillment. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things I can't do. Somebody cuss me out, I can't cuss them. You know what I'm saying? I can't just be out there punching somebody in the face. That's just not right. You got to hold yourself. But what I do get in return is if I die today, I know 
that I was on the path of my purpose. A man, everybody needs a purpose-filled life, but especially a black man when we go through it. We need a purpose-filled life. Like, I honestly know what my purpose is. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, no, that must be a really fulfilling feeling. It's a fulfill. Like, I, I don't make a lot of money. I don't. You know what I'm saying? But having fulfillment is way deeper than having money in your pocket. Yeah. Because you could have happy. you could have bread, but don't know who you are. Right. That's how you get exploited. Because that's right. what people look for. You having money don't make don't, don't mean nothing. It doesn't mean power. Power right. is knowing why you're here, and that's what I use to express to the brothers on the street, to the brothers in the jail. Know why you're here. Then you wouldn't exploit me. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't beat your girl, your baby. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't leave your kids if you knew why you was here. I could never leave my kids because I know why I'm here. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Which means I know they're here for me. Right. I could never leave my wife. If I leave her, things is not going to go good. I know that. You already know it's going to fall apart. Yep. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's a reason why you was here today. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but see my sister again, of course. Right. But you know, like people, like every, I'm going through something, and we talking to him, and I'm like, okay, like I forgot that we was even on Instagram and on the radio. What up, y'all? WVOX 1460 AM of the people. But you know, like you just never know who's listening. I hope my viewers. I hope you're listening. I hope you're getting this. Um, I know everybody doesn't listen right now, but the people who listen tomorrow or later on, or who's at work. I really hope that you get something out of this and you know if you have any more questions or if you would like to speak with Rich, um, hit me up and let me know. Um, because this you know, it's this world is, is never ending. Like things just keep happening, you know. You could be at the height of your success or whatever and something happens, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter who you are or how much you have. Um, one thing though I feel like I've been working on myself and I was in on vacation and just, just I've been at home lately, and I've been doing a lot of thinking to like not drive myself crazy. You know what I mean? I feel like people going through stuff, and you don't know how to like balance it without mm -hmm. tipping over. And I don't want to tip over. Mm -hmm. So one feeling that I feel like I got out my system, not that it was in there heavy, but I realized like I'm not like jealous of anybody. Like if you, even if you get, even if you start your talk show. Next year, and I've been doing it for three years, and you go farther than me. I'm not going to be jealous of you. I'm going to be happy for you because I do understand that everybody has their own path, mm -hmm. and everybody's here for a different reason. And time is time is different for everybody. Um, and I feel like jealousy be a lot like the root to up uh, to a lot of evil okay. when you're jealous of people, when you're envious. Um, so guys, just you know. I just want you to think about that feeling or something that may be negative in you that you want to get rid of. And jealousy is one of the things, like, nothing really, like, can make me jealous. Unless somebody's on the phone all day and not paying me no attention. But that's a different kind of jealous. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like, that's just a feeling that I don't have. Like, I'm not jealous of anybody, how much money they have, their family. You know, some things you're like, oh, I want that. Or oh, that's cool. I can't wait to get it. But to be like ill, like why she had to get that before me. It's just like everything happens for a reason and what's meant for you will be for you. Well, even the conversations you and I have had in the past, one thing I know about you that kind of I, I can identify with, you always had your own uniqueness. Right. And so okay. when you have your own uniqueness, it can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can call it. Right. Know? She calls me a weirdo all the time, but it's right. like you can't help it. Yeah. Like. I don't want to be like every. But, not that I don't want to be like everybody else. It's just that my brain just doesn't operate like that, and I just go with. And it's how, not supposed to. Like right. I told you, people used to try to tell me what to rap about, but my thing is, listen, we all have our own temptations in this world. Right. Our job is to conquer what God gives us to conquer. Like, mm -hmm. And I learned that. Like I said, I learned that through marriage. Like um, when my wife came, all all types of temptations. Like I, before, like we first, when we first started dating, I kept running off to the old girlfriend. Going back, the flesh right. was trying to pull me back out into that old world. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I learned I gotta conquer my flesh because my flesh is corrupt. My flesh desires things that are wrong. So my issue wasn't jealousy, but it was trying to find fulfillment in other places. Gotcha. You. you know what I'm See? saying? So we all have. Our yeah, own you have your own struggles that you learn to get through. But I think the first thing is like realizing that that's something that you're not that great at. You know what I mean? Like nobody. Um, and things do happen. Um, but you know, like it, it's it's slow, it's slow. But 
steady, you know. Um, consistency is the key for me, mm -hmm. for anything that we do in life. If you consistently doing, trying to do good deeds and trying to be a good person, it's going to be And I love your bravery. When Thank I first seen you start this, your bravery to, to step out there and say, I believe this could work. Mm -hmm. I, I remember your first show. Aw. I remember seeing it. Aw. It was beautiful, and I remember you telling the story that you just gave it a shot. I respected your bravery. Thank you. Because a lot of people want to be different, but they're right. scared. Right. They're scared to step out there. Uh -huh. you know, just like I was scared to step out and be a preacher because I was like, dang, everybody remember me from what I used to do. Mm -hmm. All the bad And stuff. that's the thing, too. People remember who you used to be when you was 20, when you was 18, and they kind of try to throw that at still try to throw it at you and you and me i feel like i recognize all my mistakes and things that i could have done differently you know i'm not gonna fight that like there's some things i'm like shanice you know you can but i'm sorry like and, <laughs> I'm laughing at you right like i'm sorry and there's nothing that you can do but just try to change you know try to be a better person so I do feel like once you start making it and climbing there's the people at the bottom like well you 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 did this and you did that and like, well, always, remember, always remember this, the, the higher you get, mm -hmm. the temptation gets bigger. Sometimes, and all temptation is not mercy, money. Sometimes it's the temptation to respond to your critics. Right. But even the mistakes you're talking about, that's why the word of God is so important. The Bible says, when we sin, not if, when, mm -hmm. we have an advocate with the Father. Mm -hmm. The advocate is Jesus Christ. So Jesus died in our place because he knows we can't do it by ourselves. And that's the thing. There's so much pressure on the world because there's this phony righteousness that's out there. None right. of us is right here because they see the preaching of a smile on my face or me and my wife. But mm -hmm. I, listen, my wife literally had to pray over me at the altar with my body squirming, casting spirits away from me. Wow. That was on the spirit of lust, spirit of promiscuity, spirit of sexual immorality, all of that stuff. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And... Um, the spirit of anger, unforgiveness. She's praying with her hands over me. My body is like squirming. Wow. This stuff is coming off. Wow. Like this is real, church. Right. Like that's people don't understand that. They, everybody want to come and wear a nice outfit, but they still leave them with spirits in them, mm -hmm. and they wonder why they depressed or can't stay mad. It's a spirit. Mm -hmm. It's not you. It's right. a spirit. It's so when we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Trust God. He'll 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 do whatever needs to be done with Shawnee, with Richard, with everybody. Mm -hmm. He's the answer. Wow. I love that. So he's like my union rep. Um, <laughs> uh, Jesus uh, is union rep. <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Um, guys, we got five more minutes left. Um, Minister, is there anything you want to say before the show ends? Um, you know, any Latin, any word or anything you want to tell the people? Or... Well, I want to thank you for having me and beg you to be on the show. Yeah. You didn't beg me. I did. I begged you. I love, but I love when people really want to. I'm like that. It makes you know. I was listening to Mary J. Blige, and she was like, you know, her fans made her feel like a superstar. She didn't feel like that in her head. So that's kind of how it goes for me when people want to be on girl talk. Not that I downplay myself, but I'm like, dang, like they really want, like you really want to be on the show, like you know well, what I mean. Was, but I guess it was personal for me because the, the many talks that me and you had, right? And I heard a lot of ideas that you wanted to come forth. So I seen it come to fruition. You gotta come. Yeah, I love yeah. that. But I guess if there's any word I want to give, um, uh, I would tell, I would say that the world needs to turn back to God if we want to see some of these troubles end. You know what I mean? mm -hmm. That's the best way. Okay, from Minister Richard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, because we still gotta laugh. But I, I, everything that he said, I have taken seriously. Y'all yeah, know I just gotta give y'all a little giggle here and there. Um, this was a great show. Mm -hmm. um, I think the show was more for me than for them anyway. It's like for us. for us, for the people. And that's and that's what I want to bring to Girl Talk. I want every kind of person. You know, it's not just all fun and games all the time. You know what I mean? And it, you know, we can have fun, but to have a minister on my show, like that's something that I didn't even think about until it happened. And I'm like, that's cool. Like, you know, that's cool to me. Like, wow. Um, so I'm very happy that you came um, And I'm very happy that you guys listened And you stay tuned um, Give him some hand claps I did talk about a challenge So I guess I gotta talk about the challenge now So being on vacation Thinking like I can't stop thinking My brain is always on Go 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 um, 
I'm going to do the waist bead challenge. So I have made some waist beads. And the thing is going to be if your waist beads, whoever waist beads could come down. Because you know the waist beads is in the middle of your stomach. Whoever waist beads come down, you'll, you know, you'll know that you're losing weight. And if the waist beads start to go up, you'll know that you're gaining weight. Um, I'm going to show you a video of some that I did. Um, these are some waist beads that I made already. They're customized waist beads. They have, I could put your name, I could put your brand, um, whatever you like, whatever color. There's different sizes. Um, I'm going to be selling them for $15. And if you want the smaller ones, they're going to be $20. Um, I'm going to also post it on my Instagram and on my Facebook. But if you're interested in buying some waist beads, I'm your girl. Um, so yeah, th those are my waist beads. And we're going, we got like two minutes left. Um, but like I said, the waist bead challenge, shout out to Minister Richard. Um, appreciate you. Everybody, thank you for tuning in. WVOX 1460 AM, the voice of the people. We here, we out. Hope, peace and love. <laughs>